This is the world's first animated COVID mask, which I, together with some very talented friends, created to support the Great Ormond Street Hospital. If you want to know more, stick around and I'll tell you how we made it happen, why and how you can also support the Great Ormond Street Hospital by buying one of these beautiful masks, and I'm also going to tell you a very cool story about how a pirate saved the legacy of one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. But before we do that, we have to go back to where this all started. So, I'm here in Hampstead Heath in London and it's very early in the morning and I think I just had a very cool idea. So, you know how many face masks have illustrations on them? What if these illustrations suddenly came to life and became animated? That would be really cool. And I'm thinking that if I create a film using stop motion to create this illusion of the moving mask, by the end of it, I'll have so many masks, I could even sell them to raise money for charity. And that would be very nice. So, over the course of the next month, I ran a series of stop-motion tests to figure out whether I should use ready-made masks or build them from scratch, and whether they should be drawn or printed. The idea was that every frame of the animation would be a separate mask. I would then take a picture of each mask, and when I played the frames as a movie, you would get the illusion of an animated mask. At the end, I decided that the best approach would be to print the illustrations on fabric and create custom masks. To see if my stop motion plans made any sense at all, I reached out to Dario Imbrogni, who is an old friend and longtime collaborator, and quite probably one of the greatest stop motion directors out there. If there's one person that can give me advice on a project like this, then that's definitely Dario. So I explained the main concept and got his initial approval. It's a nice idea, really nice. And then Dario told me how he would professionally do it based on his many years of experience shooting stop motion. Try a rigid one, because you, you need to, to have this part as clean as possible for the 2D animation. And then I told him how I was planning to do it. Ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please send me the test, the first test. <laughs> So even though I've been producing and directing animation every day for the past 15 years, I'm not really that great of an animator myself. So I reached out to some of the best animators that I know, and luckily they loved the project and agreed to donate their time and talent to this great cause. And I think it's really cool when creators come together from around the world to collaborate on projects like this, and this was a truly international collaboration with studios and individual creators from Canada, Germany, Israel, Spain and London. If you like animation and you want to see some really cool work, you have to check them out. I've put links in the description. So after a few weeks I started receiving the animations and it was finally time for the very long process of making the actual masks. I can't remember exactly why, but for some reason I had decided that 400 masks are the exact number of masks I should be making. And let me just say that 400 unique masks are a lot of masks, and I had clearly underestimated how much work that was. So after a lot of marking and cutting and gluing, and after many sleepless nights of sewing, the masks were finally ready. So the time had come for the exciting stage of filming the masks to create the final animation. So while we're shooting the masks, I want to say a couple of things about the Great Ormond Street Hospital. So GOSH is a children's hospital here in London that handles very serious and very complex illnesses. It's part of the National Health Service, but it also needs to raise a hundred million pounds every single year to stay alive and continue its groundbreaking research that helps children not only here in the UK, but around the world. Unfortunately, this year, because of COVID, it's been very hard to fundraise and they're really trailing behind. And this is why we're selling these masks, all 400 of them, to support the Great Ormond Street Hospital.
So before we go, I know I owe you a story about pirates. So stop motion as a technique is obviously nothing new and it's been around for a very long time. In fact, you can trace it back to the very beginning of cinema itself. And one of the early stop motion innovators was this guy called Georges Méliès. And Georges Méliès has a fascinating story. He was originally a stage illusionist and then he started experimenting with filmmaking and he created all these filmmaking techniques that we still use today. So he created things like crossfading and superimposing images and he even created slow motion, right? This guy was amazing. And also his storytelling was wonderful. He created many beautiful films, probably his most famous being A Trip to the Moon, which is a surreal masterpiece. If you haven't seen it, you should really check it out. And because of his innovations and because of his wonderful storytelling, he became really successful. And he was considered the greatest filmmaker at the time. And he would create one success after the other until he didn't. And his later films were all financial flops and he went bankrupt. And one night, Georges Méliès goes to his film studio and he sets it on fire and he destroys everything, including all of his films. And the only reason why we can still enjoy his films today is because at the time, his films were very heavily pirated. Pretty much exactly the same way that people pirate films online today. So we have to thank these early pirates for saving the legacy of one of the greatest filmmakers of all time and for still being able to enjoy his films and for using his techniques to create things like the world's first animated mask. So thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed everything. Please buy a mask and see you later. Bye-bye.